I'm Maureen Bellatori, and this is Spilled Salt, a podcast on the thrills and spills from the food, beverage, and agriculture industries. Today's guest is Kari Stannard. She's the president and CEO of Yes Apples. And if you know me, you know I love a good family business. Um, and so that's exactly what this is. Uh, Kari bought the business uh, when it was a sales company from her stepfather years ago, and since then has really made a lot of changes in the direction that the company has gone. Um, so introducing Yes Apples as a consumer facing brand. Um, and what I love about the direction that today's conversation went is Kari really talks about the importance of building trust, building your audience, building relationships with the growers that Yes Apples is working with. Um, and then some of the other ventures that she has invested in as well. Um, as always, talking about challenges in the industry across the board and some of what's next for Kari. Enjoy the conversation. Hey, Kari, how are you? I'm great. Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to jump us right in. You have been with Yes Apples for 26 years, but it wasn't always called that. So if you can give us a little bit of the background where it started leading us up to today. Yes, it's been a uh, windy and a, a twisty tale, I'd say. Um, so going back, I started actually not in the produce um, area. My stepfather uh, started dating my mother when I was probably around 10 years old. He owned a apple company. He owned uh, orchards in uh, the east side of New York State, as well as a packing facility in Hudson, New York, and then the sales company. And I worked there um, during school breaks and that type of thing and said, oh, no, packing house is not for me. I'm going to go <laughs> do something else. So went off to, um, to college in Buffalo. I uh, met my husband um, at that point in time, too, at college, and we decided to move to Atlanta, Georgia. So I worked as a uh, CPA. I got my CPA license, graduating with accounting from the University of Buffalo, and I started working down there. And I guess that's kind of where family businesses kind of piqued my interest because mm -hmm. I was an auditor and I was in a large regional firm. So don't think KPMG or one of those. Mm -hmm. I think it now is a KPMG, been gobbled up. But back then it was a small local family auditing um, CPA firm. Anyhow, worked um, in a lot of small businesses auditing them and got really fascinated by the interworkings of, you know, just small businesses and all the different family businesses that are out there from, making car parts for Saturn, which no longer exists, I don't believe, but for Saturn cars, uh, to you name it. Um, so when my stepfather asked me in 1996, 95, to come into the business, um, I jumped at it. And my husband, who also is from upstate New York, we decided to move back, started working in the business uh, in the orchards with growers, didn't know a thing about apples, barely knew what a tree was, so <laughs> just really started working with them and we really loved it. Was going around with um, spray consultants and scouts and, and you named it. Uh, but sadly, uh, in 1998, so just about two, two and a half years after coming back, he did confide in me that he had cancer, mm. uh, colon cancer, and it was very aggressive. So I purchased the marketing company in 1999. He died in 2000. And then due to estate issues, families, et cetera, we mm -hmm. sold off the orchard, sold off the packing facility, but I retained ownership of the sales organization. And so you're using those terms interchangeably, right? Sales and marketing. You just called it the marketing firm, but... I did, you know, and I I think what I want to refer to it more, uh, Maureen, is as a sales company back then. Mm -hmm. yep. Life was a bit simpler. Mm -hmm. There were yeah. limited packaging. I can remember probably two different packaging. We had apples from New York, and then we had private label Shaw's or private label Hannaford or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And we had limited varieties. So I mm -hmm. call it more of a more of a relationship transactional sales company back then. Yeah. Than what we're doing today mm -hmm. with your samples. So right. I'll refer to sales back in the early, um, early 2000s. Yep. 
so then when I, when I got into that, I really had to jump right into the day to day, very little time to breathe, had to make sure that I strengthened my relationships with what I perceive as my two customers. And that's what I always talk to my team about it as part of our vision statement is yes, our vision is to supply high flavored, wonderful textured, high quality, amazing service to our retailers slash consumers. Bar none, that's vision, very simple. One could understand that. But our other vision is to provide all those same um, service, information, uh, information on food trains, uh, food trends, rather, pricing to our customer, the grower. Because mm. in the state of New York, I am now a grower, but it wasn't back then. Um, in the state of New York, what we do, well, any state outside of Washington State, you know, there are like 150 million. New York State's 30 million, let's say. Oh, wow. Is, I did not realize that the gap was that yeah, great. Yeah, the gap is that large. Wow. So what we have to do to compete is we have to, we put all these talented, exceptional growers together, family farms together to get a mass and get mm-hmm. size so that we can compete. With that size comes knowledge and comes right. sharing of data. Um, so we have eight different packing facilities today, and they really collaborate and share information just so, so, so we can compete. Right. And so before you get into more detail on Yes Apples and the, you know, the shift there from being a sales company to what you are today, elaborate for me a little bit on your relationships with your growers, because do, do you still, you don't own orchards anymore and you're just sourcing from grower partners? So no, late, um, after I started, so just to step back, when I started um, back in the day to day, I also started in, in building my team. Mm-hmm. So as I've got this exceptional team that I still have, most of my employees have been with me 15, 20, you know, 20 years. It's a long standing team. After I was able to do that, then I was able to invest in orchards. So I do have grower partners and I own about 250 acres in Western New York. Mm. But to get size again, we've got to build because most of our growers have anywhere from, you know, 250 to a thousand acres. Right. Um, so those relationships have to be solid mm-hmm. and I believe them to be solid. So I spent a lot of time working with those growers. It's, it's a relationship, right? It's no mm-hmm. different than, you know, dating your boyfriend. It's, it's mm-hmm. getting to know them. It's gaining that trust. Right. And it's, it's years of, of proving yourself. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. So I do own now two packing facilities or interest in, not, not solely out, out mm-hmm. but interest in two packing facilities, which my partners are growers. Mm-hmm. And um, I have three partner growers. Uh, so there's four of us who own the 250 acres in, in um, uh, Orleans County. Gotcha. Okay, so, great. All right. Get us back on track then for, so you made those investments, you, you're hyper-focused yes. on your various customers, your two customers, as you call it, yep. you know, so to continue us forward there in the, in the timeline. Yeah. So the, so what we did is as I built my team um, we were, I was able to go out and like I said, invest in the packing facilities, invest in the orchard. Um, I also invested in a, uh, company called Fruit Forward. And Mm -hmm. uh, that's a group of, um, it's a guy from my office, my vice president of sales. It's growers from the state of New York, and it's also growers from Nova Scotia, Canada. Hmm. And what that is, that's an IP company because back when, when all this was happening, you had the first of the new exciting varieties, which you'll know and hopefully love of Honeycrisp. Uh-huh. So, so that was launching and that was taking the world by stage, um, and really gaining some real interest in the, uh, Apple industry itself. Mm-hmm. And with that came the proliferation of all these other crosses of Honeycrisp crosses and, yep. and, and you name it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what we were seeing in the East is that it doesn't matter if you were a breeding company from Belgium or you were a breeding company for Germany or New Zealand wherever you were located, you tended to go to Washington state because that's Mm -hmm. where all the bushels were Mm -hmm. um, to do the testing. And so we did, Mm -hmm. as we said, now, wait a minute, 
you really need to test in the East because one of our big strengths and why we can compete so mightily against Washington State is that we are so close to the majority of the population in the United States. Mm -hmm. We are just maybe at most to Florida. If you've got a team, you can go easily go overnight. Mm -hmm. We are fresh. Mm -hmm. um, we are local. We are regional. Mm -hmm. So those are our strengths that we can really, really trade off of and, mm -hmm. and serve us serve us very well and and rightly so so when you speak to testing are you referring to testing the plants in the ground to see how they grow yes so we're okay. taking uh we're taking those varieties we're planting the trees and we're testing them because our um our area in New York state is so different than right. how Washington state where they get to grow apples, which is mm -hmm. a desert. Right. So we're very humid and wet and, and all those fun things that mother nature loves to throw our direction. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we do get, we'd get different taste profiles in the same apple. We can mm -hmm. get different coloring in the same apple mm. and bluntly some things that may work in Washington state may not work here and, and vice versa. Right. So they are, they are smart um, to, to test. And of course mm -hmm. we also test and grow those great Cornell varieties, uh, yeah. you know, Snapdragon and, um, and Ruby Frost. Yep. So. And are you doing any of the other new ones that have come out of Cornell, Cosmic Crisp or any of those? Ah, see Maureen, Washington state would get you there. That's a, that's a Washington state variety cosmic. Ah, we can't grow. That came out of the breeding program in Washington state. So they have that locked up with Washington state growers for, I'm not even sure how many years, but it's at least 10 before we could even grow it. Ah, I see. So and is that the same for Snapdragon and Ruby Frost too, that that's a New York state license? No, actually, um, they, they could potentially, and that's not up to, to me. That's up to crunch time apple growers group. Right. But right. yes, I believe there's been some discussions mm -hmm. uh, with Washington state, but I'm not um, on that board. So I'm not privy to those right. discussions. Sure. But, yep. That makes yeah. sense. But a little, yeah, but a little bit different, but we do grow other great varieties such as Evercrisp and mm -hmm. Sweet Tango, mm -hmm. another two other phenomenal varieties. Yeah. And I don't want to get too much off on a tangent here, um, but I do think that it's important to help viewer or listeners understand premium managed apple varieties, which is what you're referring to. And so I yes. worked years ago on Snapdragon and Ruby Frost under Crunch Time Apple Growers, you oh, know, no which, kidding. yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Okay. That's Four or right. five years ago. Um, and so I'm familiar with that concept from that relationship, but previously I hadn't been, it was just a different apple in the store to me as a consumer. Right. So can you speak to that a little bit, just defining premium managed apple variety and what that means? Yeah, there's, um, there, there is, there is a difference and, um, what, it's hard to communicate to consumers, but they have to realize is that growers pay royalties, Mm -hmm. to the IP holder, the, the uh, intellectual property holder. Um, in this case, as we're talking about Snapdragon and Ruby Frost, that's Cornell. So mm -hmm. Cornell has put through all this work and time and expertise in crossing these varieties and, and, and getting this flavor and then providing for us to grow them. Mm -hmm. But it comes at a cost. So, mm -hmm, right. And, and it can range for every, every new premium managed variety has a different royalty structure. So mm -hmm. I won't get into any of the details. Yeah. There. Yep. But yep. Yeah, yes, it, great. it is different than a, what we call an open release, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, like a honey crisp was mm -hmm. an open release. Right. Yep. On those lines. Great. For okay. sure. So, Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. So orchards, packing facilities, packing food forward, facilities. And you're continuing to grow the, the organization. A fruit for it continue to grow. It was at this point in time that I just want to put a plug to all those um, women owners out there who may be listening. Um, the other thing that I did that was so important was um, I went out and tried to do something for myself. I said, I need some leadership skills here as well. Mm. So I was class 12 of the United Leadership Program um, through United Fresh. And it was at that point that not only did I learn a lot through their programs, but it was the first year that they had the most women at any given time, years previous to that, so 11 uh, down to one the first year, they might have had one or two women. Mm -hmm. In my year, we had five, including mm -hmm. myself. Um, um, these women, I literally just spent the weekend with last, last weekend, 
um, catching up, you just, you have to build that sound base. You have to mm-hmm. build that, that, that cocoon of, of trust of who you can go to and who you can say, is this a crazy idea? Should I not be doing this? What do you totally. know about, you know, what's, what is, what is their reputation? You know, should, should they be trusted? Just, it's just so important. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to, to put a frog, not only for that program, it's a great program. Mm-hmm. There's other great programs out there to be found, mm-hmm. but definitely find your, find your people. Find your it's people. So, Couldn't agree find, more. And find every, your people. every season we have a leadership coach, um, that we interview on the podcast as well. So, oh, so cool. um, maybe we missed season two, but I can't remember. But anyway, um, Maria cast is a leadership coach that I've worked with a lot over the years. I believe she was in season one and spoke to, you know, the, the advantage of kind of learning to listen to, yourself and what she calls your inner coach and that kind of thing. But mm. I really a hundred percent subscribe to that concept of finding your people and your peers that you can confide in and rely on to be your kind of gut check when your inner coach, you know, is kind of not <laughs> sure, right. That you need so a true. sounding board. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So really from that, you know, so it was building the team, Maureen, it was, you know, doing something for myself, um, like the leadership we was talking yeah. to about and building those relationships on mm-hmm. the retail side, as well as the grower side. Mm-hmm. And then came, um, and then came, I, I'll say the, the pivot. So as we were going through all these changes in the apple industry as a whole with these new varieties and it's getting so crowded Mm -hmm. and you know you're you're talking to people in the grocery store and you're like what variety do you like and nine times out of ten they say red delicious and you just want to scream and you're like look at all these other great varieties yeah (laughs) but you can also see from a consumer's point of view heck from my own point of view you go into a store and you're like what is that i really have to look at that it's a bicolored red that well there's thousands of bicolored reds on that shelf and we're struggling with it as an industry. Retailers are struggling with it. Consumers are struggling with it. And so, again, going back to building the strong team, um, on a freelance level, I was working with a great gal, um, Temley, and she is just amazing. And she came from uh, Fresh Direct, mm. she was working at Blue Apron, and she was doing a lot of the you know shopper marketing and I said, I need you come to my team because mm-hmm. I need to cut through this noise and I don't mm-hmm. know how to do it myself, but mm-hmm. like, I just do not know how to do it. But you knew it had to be done, right? And, and even that is a, yeah. is a unique thing to recognize that I've got to do Thank something you. new and different here. Thank you for saying so. So, so brought her on and we said, what are we going to do? So we came up, um, she and I and the team came up with yes apples and we said what we want to do is we want to build a brand there are there really aren't there are very few brands that one can speak of in the produce one could argue chiquita one could argue dole uh, um uh, uh driscoll's is powerful um but new york apple sales that's not a brand like to a consumer what is that new york apple sales it sounds like i mean anything Mm-hmm. So we came out with Yes Apples, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to talk to directly to the consumer to the best of our ability, and again, back to that trust and build that trust with them that, well, yes, it's confusing on the shelf, and yes, there's a lot out here. If you pick up that Yes Apple mm-hmm. bag or you pick up that Yes Apple apple that's loose with the, with the PLU sticker, Mm-hmm. it's going to be a great eating experience. Mm-hmm. It's, you're going to be wowed. And that's mm-hmm. what we, we try to do. Do we sometimes fail? Of course. But what mm-hmm. we have is we have a vehicle now that the consumers can write us. And do mm-hmm. they write? <laughs> you know? Oh, really? You get a they lot of feedback? Get, yes, we do get feedback. And we get, this was great. This was incredible. Or we get something like, oh, I didn't like that. you know. And mm-hmm. it just gives us feedback because we have mm-hmm. traceability in our bag. We'll go back to mm-hmm. the consumer and we'll say, can you just bring me the traceability sticker? Mm-hmm. That ties right back to our packing shed. Packing mm-hmm. shed can tie it right back to the date it was packed. Yep. And we can say, you know, what do your records show on that? What, 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 where do we maybe fail here? Mm-hmm. What yeah. were you seeing? So yep. it's just a lot more accountability. Yep. But a brand also, you know, talks to consumer. It also allows us to do really cool things. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, back to the testing. So we do have a lot of these um, 
testing varieties that are unnamed um, that we have in our test block. And what we can do at each harvest is we can take out our, our nine pack Yes Apples box. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a wonderful now email list of consumers mm. that um, are talking to us and are receiving these emails. So we'll say to them, hey, we'll send you a free box of apples. Will you fill out this questionnaire? Yeah. And then the questionnaire lists all the attributes. What do you like about it? Down to funny things like, what would you name it? Like, mm -hmm. what comes to mind for a mm -hmm. name? Um, do you think it's too similar to what's out there? Does it knock your socks off? Because bluntly, you cannot bring another apple variety out unless it really knocks the socks right. off people. Yeah. It has to be spectacular. These are mm -hmm. not the early days of uh, just when Honey Crisp was just out. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting that we can do. And if you don't have a brand, you, you, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. It also allows us to be in places that, that others, that CPG is, right? And, you know, it gets another consumer who might be now looking for a CPG product. So I'm referring to Pop-Up Grocer. Have you ever seen Pop-Up mm, Grocer? I don't think so. They're these cool little shops that like to pop up and you, and they're often in New York city or Chicago or Austin, big cities. And it's mostly cool CPG brands. Maybe it's an organic offering or maybe it's a vegan offering or, you know, just cool different brands. And we are, well, up to this date, I uh, can't say forever, but we've been the only uh, produce item in the stores. Mm. So we're putting our new varieties in there. This mm -hmm. is the Evercrest, the Sweet Tango. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can go in and just pick. Is it is it selling cases upon cases of apples? No, it's not truckload sales, but it's building awareness. Right, exactly. And, yeah. And that's what we're trying to do is mm -hmm. build awareness and build that groundswell, hopefully, of interest. Mm -hmm. Because what that hopefully does is build... Then they go to their Walmarts of the world and their Costco's and they say, why don't you have Snapdragon? Why uh -huh. don't you have Evercrest? Yeah. And hopefully that gets reported back to home offices and then they start buying them. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and then you really get distribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a really cool thing that you can do. I love that. The, the thing I want to point out for listeners and just bring back to you too, that is so unique and important is the stress that you're putting on building a relationship with your audience to be able to have that email list of built-in consumers and engaging with them in an above and beyond kind of way is something that even though a lot of brands understand the importance of that, they kind of fall short on understanding how to implement it. Right. Whereas how, I've got this list of engaged consumers, but how do I, how do I get feedback from them? Right. Whereas yeah. you're, yeah. you're taking that all the way to say, we're planning these, these test plots of these apples and we want feedback and we're going to go to our own list to see what they have to say and just survey them. Right. Whereas I think some, sometimes brands make that more complicated than it needs to be, you mm -hmm. know, of just ask your audience, just ask your audience. Right. And so I yes. imagine that the, what, well, how, what kind of volume are you sending out? For those, and what kind of response rate are you getting for the uh, for the samples mm -hmm. to, yep. for the varieties? I think the last time we sent out, we sent out an apple variety that's coming um, out of Australia. It's called uh, right now called Saluna, and I think she sent out about 80, 80 boxes. Mm -hmm. And I think our return rate of responses was around fifty percent. That's so remarkable. It's, it's not a hundred, but it's, but it's not 10. You're never right? going to get a hundred, right? right. Uh, yeah. A 50% is response rate is remarkable for that kind of thing. So, it's really great. Yeah. That's great to hear. Cause I know you're, you're absolutely in that field. So that, that was great. And, and Tenley too said, Kari, it's great. Cause I said, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like you're thinking, why isn't it a hundred? <laughs> what do you mean? Why wouldn't they answer me? <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's and really it, great. It's about, again about the grassroots. We're trying to do things um, like the New York Apple Association sponsors the New York City Marathon, which yes. I think is super cool. So we've tagged on to the Roadrunners Club, and mm -hmm. so we'll we'll donate apples to them so that after after their race they can taste um, taste our apples and hopefully you know talk to their friends. Right? Look at what I got! I got a free mm -hmm. apple. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that type right. Of thing to keep right. that up, and I'll be wearing uh, just a plug here. 
Maureen, if, if you if you want to come cheer me on, I will be with my family running the New York City Marathon this November. Wow, good for you. Wearing all my Yes Apples decked out swag that I'm sure Tenley will put me in. <laughs> so. Of course she will. Of course she will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, I love that. Funny. Good for you. And so, I, think one of, I just want to say one other thing, one other yeah. great thing that we have done that is different you couldn't do without a brand mm. is have, um, have you heard of the Evec Juices? It was, you read my mind. That was the next question you don't I was have just going to gonna mix ask alcohol you. with them. You can drink them as is, but they're, they're super cool. And we partnered with them to do a Yes Apples, a Vec, uh, fruit, uh, Fuji rather, apple and cardamom mix. And it's, mm-hmm. you can find it at Sprouts right now and also at Wegmans. Um, so that's kind of cool. It's putting yeah, us into an cool. area where we can't be. We're not, it's right. non central, center store. So, yep. So talk more about Sorry, that. I get very excited talking about Yes Apples. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Tell me more about the partnership with Avec Drinks. Like what, what, how did that come about? You know, who initiated that? What was your, what was your process there? That was, um, Tony, Tony was seeking them out. She works, um, I believe, and I hope I don't get this wrong, but she works with, we, we hire a uh, circle media to do um, mm-hmm. a lot of our social media work that we do. That's another way that we talk to our consumers is mm-hmm. uh, through a lot of different, either Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and they were an also partner there. And so mm-hmm. she looped up with the, with the uh, founder, I believe of Evac. Mm-hmm. This all came to be, and it's mm-hmm. we've now on our third um, different uh, or third juicing. So it's, it's going really well and it's, uh, you know, super exciting. Yeah. That's to have fantastic. That. Glad to and hear that gonna... it's at Wegmans. I'll get, I'll look for that. Yes, next time please, I'm in store. Please go check it out. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you also about something unique that you're doing too. I talk a lot about the grow New York competition, big fan of that yeah. as a, an initiative in the state of New York to attract more food and ag tech, uh, companies to the region and you're a judge. Can you yes. speak to that experience? What's that like? That that was amazing. So I was approached about um, three years ago uh, to do it. I'm, I'm in my second year, just finished my second year. Um, you know, it's through, you know, through Cornell and of course through the state. And it's just so interesting. I jumped at it. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is, this is just amazing. And it's all these new startups and it can be, you know, anything that benefits, um, central New York, right? You've got to, mm-hmm. you've got to have jobs. You've got to, you've got to, you should solve a solution or have a solution for a problem, you know, potentially within the state. So a lot of it, mm-hmm. a lot of times dairy, we have such a big dairy industry. Right. Um, I had the honor of, I did abstain, um, because I, I, I was working with, but, uh, a company called Vivid Machines. Mm-hmm. who is doing this wonderful work um, for counting of apples and counting of blossoms with mm-hmm. uh, with their cameras. Um, they won two years ago. It's just, um, gosh, Maureen, what can I say about it? It's just so, it's just so interesting and such great work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I'm honored that uh, they chose me and that I've been a judge and I'm coming back next year as well. So it's really cool. That's awesome. I love it. Tell me about challenges. You're, you're speaking to a lot of, you know, ways that you've kind of innovatively solved a lot of problems or challenges that you saw in the industry in terms of, you mentioned, you know, it was getting so crowded with all these apples that were in the store. And so you decided I want to do something new and different. And then you worked with the team to solve that. What are some of the other challenges that you're still seeing in the industry? Yeah. So a lot of my attention, um, Again, very blessed that I have the team. So what I've been doing is I've been shifting a lot of my day to day work, um, over, you know, over to others as it should be. And mm-hmm. I'm focusing more and more of my time on larger strategic thinking of how do, how do I, because in the supply chain, because we're not totally vertically integrated just because of our model, because of, our state and mm-hmm. you know within our state i should say we have uh four very diverse growing regions mm-hmm. you know you have western new york central new york the champlain region and the valley um, and then the valley can span anywhere from albany down to newburgh so you've got all all these different groups so it's very important that every single segment 
of that supply chain adds value. There, mm-hmm. there can't be any takers. There, mm-hmm. there has mm-hmm. to be a sharing around the chain or it will not work. So what I'm focused on right now is as we, as we go into more and more potentially of, of oversupply, we just have a lot of apples being grown now because, you know, growers have proliferated quite a few apples. So what we need to do is grow consumption. Mm-hmm. And so what I need to do, and so I believe we're doing that with, uh, with our good work with Yes Apples, and we'll continue down that path and talking to our consumers. Mm-hmm. But we also need to do is we need to get more efficient. So mm-hmm. how do I basically impact the supply chain to get more efficient? So what I mean by that is I'm focusing a lot on data. Mm-hmm. So I'm investing money into, for instance, for our packing uh, facility into uh, ERP systems is how do we get better software into the packing facilities mm-hmm. so that they're operating more efficiently. Mm-hmm. And then that can flow into decreased, hopefully the goal is decreased packing charges, mm-hmm. more money going back to the grower base. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, I'm working very close, closely with Vivid, as I spoke about. We're, mm-hmm. we're going to be a New York Apple sales, um, investing in uh, our growers into their orchard so that they can use her system so that blossom time, um, they, they can scan the rows mm-hmm. and figure out how much thinning they have, they have to do because mm-hmm. thinning at um, blossom time is so important mm-hmm. so that you don't have to hand thin later on because mm-hmm. labor mm-hmm. is so, and you right. asked me, right. all this ties back to your first question was what are your challenges now? Mm-hmm. And our, our, we always had challenges. So I'm not going to say, you know, back when I was terming the company, a sales company that we didn't have challenges. Of course we did. Mm-hmm. They were just different. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And now the challenges because you're in it seem even mightier and, and bigger, but yeah. that's the, the regulations, uh, over time rules, mm-hmm. a escalating and never seems ending a war rate for mm-hmm. our labor, for our H2A labor. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just nonstop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's strategically, that's where I'm trying to work with my team and the growers and saying, what can I do? I can't, I can't change the market, right? Mm -hmm. The Apple market is very much dictated by simple economics, which is supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Right. Very easy, very easy to understand, harder to accept, Mm -hmm. very easy to understand. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) But what, what else can I do? So it's a lot of Mm -hmm. it's meetings, it's talking Mm -hmm. it through it saying, so where can I add value? Because, Mm -hmm. um, I want to be here forever. I have, I have two girls that potentially come into the business that both at college. Now I see a bright future and I need our grower base to be there right along with me. Yeah. Yeah. So, And I love how you're thinking so creatively about solving some of those problems too, right? That it's not, how can I directly solve the H2A labor problem? It's how can I add efficiency that is going to help benefit that challenge later in the season, right? By leveraging equipment and, and technology like vivid machines to add earlier into the season, right? That's going to benefit you down the line because you don't have to thin later on. Right. So right, you're, thank you. yeah. yeah, due to your deep understanding of the industry, you're able to problem solve in a new and different way, which is just invaluable. You know, I mean, you can't, you can't put a, a you can't teach that 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 comes from years and years of experience in the industry. That's not, you know, it's something that someone new coming in can really deeply understand at that level. And so it's, that's, an, I think, another reason why family organizations are so great too, you know, because they Excellent. little at a time teach that, you know, little by little throughout the process. Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. And it's, it's so great to see, you know, and a lot of our uh, orchard uh, partners, we've got the younger generation coming in, you know, and it's just, Mm -hmm. it's just so exciting. You want that. You want that to continue. That's what you Mm -hmm. want. Right. That's what you need and want. All right. Last question for you. What's next? What's next for Kari and yes, apples. Ah, continue, continue down the, the path. Really what's on my mind and the forefront of my mind is, is 
the investment into gaining those efficiencies. So I'm going to mm-hmm. continue, continue down that um, path. Um, personal level, hopefully not dying in the New York City Marathon. So maybe <laughs> we could have another chat <laughs> after November. We'll post update. How I, yep. How I succeed. Um, you know, hopefully watching uh, my daughters. One's graduating out of Villanova this year. She's mm-hmm. going to be doing investment banking in New York City. So proud to watch her grow and yeah. hopefully bring her back into the bu- into the business. I should say not back, but into the business. Mm-hmm. And I have another one that's a freshman at Wake Forest. So we'll see what, so what takes her, but mm-hmm. it's also um, just continually build the team. I mm-hmm. am always looking for, uh, for, for great, great people with the same, same vision and, and passion um, for what we do because bar none, the produce businesses, Best business on the planet, certainly given um, me such um, such joy, honestly, mm-hmm. not without not without its headaches, mm-hmm. but um, opportunities and uh, and just great people. So, yeah, fantastic. Just keep pushing on. Yep, <laughs> I love it. Well, that that you're adding important value to the industry, and so thanks for all of your work, and thanks for taking the time today for the conversation and sharing your story with the Spilled Salt crew. Oh, this has been an honor. Thank you so much. Thanks, Maureen. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Spilled Salt. I'm Maureen Bellatori. For more information about the podcast, visit www.agency-29.com. If you have questions for me or you'd like to recommend a guest for a future episode, you can send a message using the contact form on the website. Like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you never miss an episode.